and hello out there, everybody. What's going on? This is Miho, joined, as always, by my co-host, Pax, and this is the Stream My Podcast. Stream it! What do you got for us today, Pags? What have you been watching? I'm going to kick it off with the biggest horse shit ever on TV, and that is what we've been recapping for the last freaking eight weeks, and that is The Bachelorette. Oh, let's go. Let's not bury the lead in this episode, and let's dive right in, man. Did we finally get a finale? So, let me toot my own horn by saying week two of this show, I predicted Jed to be the winner and what did we get jed as the winner oh so, okay spoiler alert hopefully everybody's watched it already well uh, this thing will be dropped tomorrow so that's two days that's plenty of time for these people to freaking figure it out <laughs> so jed ultimately won but if i'm remembering correctly we had two episodes worth of material that we got to dive into yeah so it starts off she has the two roses she ends up picking tyler first and then jed which is too much of the demise of a lot of people because everybody loved pd the pilot pd goes home he's balling they cut to chris harrison he sits on the couch with, with peter and hannah they talk hannah says that they didn't have sex twice in the windmill it was actually four times <laughs> right in front of peter's mom and it was awkward to say the least Good stamina by my man Peter. Four times. I'm babe. You ever seen the movie uh, uh, The Internship? At Google? Yes. Yeah, I did see that. Where the Asian kid's at the strip club and he keeps ejaculating in his pants. And the third time he does it, Owen Wilson goes, you know what? I will say this. The reboot time is impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, man. One night? Holy moly. Yeah, so... Um, Tyler and Jed meet her parents. Her parents absolutely love Tyler. Don't like Jed. Don't like the fact that he's a musician, blah, blah, blah. She obviously doesn't listen to him because she ends up picking Jed at the end. And all happy in Bachelorette land, well, not so much. So there have been rumors, there have been a People Magazine issue out that Jed, before the airing of the show, had said that he was coming on just to promote his music, which he told Hannah all well and good. Well, he also didn't tell her that he had a girlfriend that he slept with, that he told her he loved her the day he left for the episode. This girl had text messages, freaking videos of them at a beach together, literally two days before he left for The Bachelorette. So she proved you wrong, mister. I don't want to believe that it's true. No doubt. I didn't even know that there was a People magazine. I thought it was just a rumor coming out, but uh, yeah. Jed's a scumbag. Everybody hates him. And but she doesn't Hannah, know this before she picks him? Like, why the hell would she pick him if all this is going on? Well, it came out after the show had been filmed already. So Hannah knew about it while the show was airing, but like this shit isn't live. This thing happened four months ago. Oh, okay. I didn't realize there was that much lag time between real life yes. and so filming of the show. Essentially, after episode three or four, when Jed started becoming a close favorite, this girl went on People Magazine and kind of put him on blast. So they video them coming together about two weeks after they get engaged, and she's like, pissed obviously i will say this the dude was brutally honest he was like yeah i was sleeping with a bunch of chicks he was he was honest with her and everything it was just a little bit too late so they called off the engagement and it comes out talking to chris harrison and then tyler comes out after and he's sitting on the couch and hannah asks tyler to go get a drink with her so we're left with a cliffhanger to follow on social media and see if these two lovebirds are uh, doing the damn thing. Could you imagine being that Tyler guy, dude? Like, what are you doing? You got dude. this chick picking crazy dudes for 10 out of the 12 weeks. 
ultimately sleeps with a guy like four times, then bounces him because she's like, yeah, I'm not picking this guy, so I might as well bang him a couple times. Then ultimately picks the dude who's going after his music career and has a girlfriend back home. But I- I'm not seeing any red flags there at all. So, yeah. This girl definitely knows what she's doing, apparently. Uh, I saw a tweet that from somebody who was freaking hilarious. It was like, Oh, man, I feel so bad for Tyler. He's the most eligible bachelor out there now. Congrats on all the sex you're about to have, buddy. Seriously, man. Like, what are you doing? I get it. Hopefully it was just TV and they were like, hey, this is going to be great suspense. You guys go get a drink. But come on, man. Well, he he played quarterback at Wake Forest. I had no idea. Yeah, so not like he's hurting for chicks here, it sounds like. No, he's got it all figured out. I mean, his dad's sick, and he's helping his dad run his dad's business. He quit his own job. So the dude is obviously killing life. What was the reaction of the Twitter sphere, the females? How did uh, oh. how did the world take in all of this news that you just spilled upon us? Well, when Tyler went down, I jumped right onto Twitter, and people went absolutely ape shit on Twitter because everyone knew about this Jed thing the whole time and when she sent Tyler home people went absolutely nuts memes out the ass gifs everywhere it was it was some fun stuff to follow along to ah you're a gif guy not a gif guy gif gif whatever it is <laughs> I don't even know what it is I always say gif yeah so that uh that puts a Cherry on top for Bachelorette talk for now, but next Monday we got Bachelor in Paradise, and it looks like we have our first chick that's bisexual going to be sleeping with dudes and chicks, so looking forward to that for sure. <laughs> Soon it's just going to be one big orgy house. Oh, uh, dude, it's Bachelor in Paradise is golden. <laughs> we're going to have that, and quick teaser as well, since we're uh, previewing content. I believe since camp opened up last week in the NFL, shouldn't Hard Knocks be coming again soon? Oh, uh, dude, no doubt. Starting next week, next uh, Tuesday, August 6th. So okay. we're going to do it right now because we probably won't have one until it airs next week. Yeah, see, that's how I thought The Bachelorette would work, that they're filming stuff, you know, maybe a couple weeks beforehand and then pounding it out. I didn't realize it was that far in advance with what's going uh, on. Oh, yeah, no, it all, it all happened before they even air the show. Oh, that's wild, dude. But certainly looking forward to uh, both of those conversations next week. Couldn't be more polar opposite on the spectrum. Very much looking forward to seeing Antonio Brown coming into practice on a hot air balloon and not practicing for the first day. There are so many characters on this team, man. I don't even know what to expect. I mean, Gruden's going to be his character on his own. So it's going to be fun to watch. Definitely, dude. And I wonder which lower end roster guys that they're going to choose to follow around. And there's always that guy of, will he or won't he make the team? Please root for him. And then he's cut. The Kevin Kajus of last year, the Crystals guy. Is that what it is? I don't even remember. Oh, yeah. He was the third string tight end. His dad and him had like a whistle that they could pick out of a crowd when they're in a big crowd. So he's on the field. You could hear his dad in the stands doing the whistle. It was wild. Oh, my goodness, man. There's always something where you're just like, what the hell are they talking about? HBO really does a great job in capturing the drama of a football team and the different storylines. You know they do their homework and figure out some people that have a little more crazy backgrounds. And you don't have to look very far because you got your stars of your team of Antonio Brown, Vontae Perfect, Derek Carr, John Gruden, it's getting, and then Mike Mayock of all people. So you got a lot of personalities there. Got a lot to look forward to, man, for sure. And uh, speaking of personalities, the show that's caught my eye being in the podcast world now is the Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. I know Netflix has been pushing this as their background or spotlight or whatever the heck they call it there. So have you seen any of these episodes? Because I hadn't watched any of them until this past week when they were throwing it in my face. I actually watched a couple of them when they first came out. I'm a big Seinfeld guy, so uh, it's interesting to see them interact outside of the spotlight. It's it's cool to see. I saw uh, the Jim Carrey one and uh, the Jimmy Fallon one. Sure. But um, 
kind of cut off there, but I do want to see the Alec Baldwin one. Oh, There's man, dude, I've watched games. maybe 20 to 25 of them already, just running through them, because it's right up my alley at, like, anywhere from 12 to 17 minutes. You just pound these out. And first of all, it's not truly, like, a comedy series. You, you hear comedians in cars getting coffee, and you think they're going to be telling jokes or giving background, and it's really more of an in-person podcast conversation. And that's why I'm mm-hmm. enjoying it because Seinfeld's asking a lot of questions that are kind of off the mainstream, you know, and Jay Leno made fun of the one. He's like, what is a, what a makes you tick? <laughs> yeah, I'm not ticking. What are you asking about? It's just like shit like that. Like, you know, it's good. Come on, let's talk about. And they really talk about the evolution of comedy, how they got their starts in stand up, how they go about attacking bits or getting their set together. The, the arc of a joke and their stand up and who they idolized and things like that. And somebody who's learning how to have conversations and interviews with people. It's kind of interesting, like you said, just to see the different personalities and the way they interpret conversations and bring up different points. Like Howard Stern was a funny one because he's such a, you know, quote unquote, like cynical person where Jerry was like, dude, why are you so mad or negative all the time? And he's just like, man, why are you like, let me be me. This is me. Don't give me shit. Like, you're just bringing me on my show. And now you're giving me shit for what I'm saying here. Like, this is how this works. You're a horrible host. You know, they, they were laughing at each other because it was in good fun. But, you know, part of them was half serious. And it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting to see their outlook and, and really their careers. And, and that's the thing, man. All these individuals are... Not up there in age, but, you know, 30, 40, 50 years old. And it just kind of reminds you, you know, how much time you have and the stories they tell. Yeah, back when I was 30 doing this or doing that, it's like, man, there's just the length of careers is impressive. Yeah. And then you got uh, some rehashes of old Seinfeld characters. Sure. Like, uh, Jerry Louis Dreyfus. And, uh, dude, it's so many people in this. And... I can't wait to watch it because I'm looking through it right now and I'm seeing all these names. I didn't even realize. The, I think I jumped off way too early. Yeah, dude, it's sweet. Plus all the cars, all the 1930s, mm-hmm. 50s, 40s, Rolls Royce, Mercedes, Benz, Fiat's, Porsches, some of these cars. I'm not a car person and I'm just like, look at this thing, man. That was a speed car. Or it's tiny or it's huge. It's just, it's all over the spectrum. He tries to pick the car that best resembles the comedian that he has yeah. joining him. And it, it's just kind of funny to watch him pair a car with a person. Yeah. Well, while sticking to Netflix, have you caught Last Chance You? Kind of like a hard knocks for Juco. Yeah, dude, Juco. I haven't. I've been told a couple of times. I've seen certain individuals on there. One of them actually ended up at Pitt after Penn State and going there. So following his career, watching the episodes where he was prevalent. But overall, man, I haven't seen at least the new series I know that's out. They switched schools, didn't they? Yeah, so the first school they were down in Mississippi. You had the EMCC guy. He was – you couldn't have two polar opposite coaches. And the coaches really are the head of the show, the main focal point of the show gotcha and so emcc you obviously you saw that people have seen that so season uh part two they follow two seasons with this coach called jb white dude from compton oh and there's a uh not an equation you hear often <laughs> let's just say these kids are all hood and this dude's more hood than anyone you've ever seen <laughs> and he's a white dude and it's crazy uh, the other coach was very X's in the nose, blah, blah, blah. This guy's more, my shit works. Follow me. If you don't want to follow me, get the fuck out of here. And it is crazy to see these coaches because in a babied world where PC is everything, these coaches can't be PC because these kids have either done something wrong, got kicked out of a school. So they almost have to be the hard ass and have these players play well in spite of them because they're pissed off at their coach. Otherwise, these kids are just going to do their thing and then not make it to the next level. And that, These coaches do have these kids' best intentions in mind. It's just they go about it in a way different way than what... Oh, yeah. I saw that documentary does. on this. I believe it was called The Gridiron Gang, starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, there you go. 
It's exactly, that's exactly what you got right there. But, <laughs> yeah, no, dude. You, I've also heard the scenes where the kids are in school and some of these guidance counselors that have to deal with some of this BS and just how they put up with it is beyond words sometimes. Oh, dude, some of these kids, man, I don't even know how they do it. I don't know how these people deal with them because they're just so broken. And I give them mad props for dealing with it. But I don't know if I would have the patience to deal with some of these kids. It would drive me yeah, nuts. No way. Some of these kids have terrible backgrounds. It's just, it's unfortunate. Because, I mean, in the latest season I was watching, starting quarterback, Florida State, gets kicked out of Florida State, and he is just a head case. And it, I, it would drive me nuts. <laughs> tough, tough gig, man, for sure. What else you got? Uh, so let's see here. One that I'm going to watch this week that came out on Netflix as well, the preview I did watch, but it was called The Great Hack, like hacking somebody's phone. Did you see this trailer? I did not. So it's basically a documentary about the Cambridge Analytica scandal, which in layman's okay. terms was pretty much the Facebook data usage, data mining scandal that's recently been brought to light. And in the trailer alone, what caught me is the tagline or the punchline of the fact that our data, the data that all these websites take in, the Cambridge Analytica basically said that they have over 5,000 data points on every single person and that they can sell this data to companies, which can then use it to target marketing a certain way to essentially get you to buy things based on the way you act and how you socialize on these networks. And the one thing that went over the top was the fact that apparently data is now the most expensive currency on Earth. It literally passed oil as the most expensive and most important thing in this world. Wow. Well, I, I know that uh, Amazon literally hires people to sell data that they own to companies, and it's it's not surprising because everybody talks about with their phone, what's the most important thing? Data. It's it's wild. So I laughed the other day when we were recording in person because we were talking about Mitchell Trubinsky and I was like, hey, look up his stats. And you literally typed the letter M into your computer and Google was like, oh, are you looking for Mitchell Trubinsky? And yeah. literally that's what it's doing. It's saying this is how Pags does. This is when he goes on Facebook. This is what he's looking at. This is how long he spends on each page. This is what he's doing on the internet. This is what he's doing on Instagram. Here you go, company. Target your ads at this specific time for this, this many times, and eventually he will buy this product. Even yesterday, I was talking to either you or a buddy on the phone, and I was like, Yo, when the hell is a app going to be available in PA for sports betting? What do I do? I go on Facebook after that conversation, and it's like, FanDuel app is live in PA. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. That's it, brother. Right in your face. And oh, what did you do? Go on and place the bet, didn't you, Pags? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I did. And I, uh, I did a little too much of it yesterday because I had some fun with it. That's it, right, dude? But case in point, that's exactly what's going on. And as a company, if you could gather this information, it's a gold mine. If I had the money to be like, how do I get people to listen? Oh, I post here, do this, sponsor that, go here. All of a sudden, they're subscribers. It's insane to think about how you can kind of manipulate people. For sure. And the uh, world is changing right before our eyes, and it's pretty crazy to watch. It's wild, dude. It's wild. So do you have anything else? I got one more that I want to drop before we head out. Yeah, I have one coming out August 17th, HBO. Oh, um, a little two-week preview teaser. Fans of Eastbound and Down. I'm a fan for sure. Another uh, HBO series coming out with Danny McBride called The Righteous Gemstones, starring John Goodman, Danny McBride, and Adam Devine. And oh, there you go. That's a good crew. It's essentially following a family of televangelists who are like, God is great, God is good, and we thank him for our food. But in reality, they're just like, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money, give me the money. <laughs> it looks hilarious. I can't wait to watch it. It's a half hour on HBO, so it's going to be easy to stream, and it looks great. Yeah, those two or three interacting with each other, I can certainly anticipate some laughs in regards to those scenes. Even if it's not even a good story, those guys are going to make you laugh. 
ninety percent of the time. That's for sure. And my last one here, apparently it's gonna make you laugh, make you puke, make you queasy, uncomfortable, but it was recently released, I think just a handful of days ago, on Amazon Prime. And that one is the new uh, superhero vigilante tale of the boys. Have you seen that? I cannot wait to watch it, but I hear you really need to uh, prepare yourself. My buddy described it as you need to soak yourself in bleach in a bathtub after watching it. Yeah, the one guy I was reading an article said it's based on the graphic graphic comic book strip and just watching the trailer basically what happens is it's a group of they say vigilantes so a group of people who are trying to put superheroes in their place because of the collateral damage that tends to happen and these superheroes just have no laws or rules and do whatever they want and it starts with literally a guy holding his girlfriend's hands in the street right on the curb and he's like oh i love you so much and then all of a sudden she literally explodes just into a huge ball of guts and whatever. And he's left holding her hands and a superhero stops and was basically running faster than the speed of light and went right through this chick and was like, I can't stop. I can't stop. I have to keep going. And then you end up following this guy who wants revenge on these superheroes because they're killing people and affecting their lives and nothing's happening from it. But like you said, dude, apparently it's just full of gruesome beheadings, explosions, killings, and it's a a wild, wild scene for Amazon to throw out there. I'm in for it. Uh, Probably won't watch it with the wife and kids, but I'll definitely be catching it. Yeah, definitely an after-hours show when you're chilling by yourself, man. I'm going to give it a shot, and I'm not big on the gore, blood, and all that shit, so we'll see how far I can make it here, but... uh, it's definitely caught my interest. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. And there's a lot of stuff coming up, man. We're, we'll preview more stuff coming in the in the next couple episodes. But this is really the time where a lot of people drop shit during the week because, you know, weekends are going to be held up by football. Exactly, man. And if you guys are watching something out there we didn't talk about today, let us know about it. Call the hotline. It's in our bio, it's in the description of this episode, as well as comment on our post on social media. Let us know what to check out. If you've watched the things we were discussing, let us know your favorite comedian or car that was used, and give us your takes on The Bachelorette, because that was an insane finale. Yes, it was, and uh, we will have much more to come in the near future. We'll talk to you guys later. Peace!